Are you wondering how to break the stigma around mental health <laughs> issues and the impact that it's having on our African American and other disenfranchised communities? If you are, join us, your hosts, Marincia Henson, Lucretia Lee, and Wilanda Johnson on our Mindful Moments Mental Health Radio Show every second and fourth Thursday of every month at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time as we dive into a mindful dialogue to empower, inform, and bring awareness to the positive impact of mental health wellness. Good evening, good evening, everyone. Thank you again for tuning in to Mindful Moments Mental Health Radio Show. I am one of your hosts, Marincia Henson. I am an associate clinical social worker here in San Diego. I provide therapeutic and social services for children and adolescents as well as adults with uh, diagnoses of mental health as well as intellectual developmental disabilities here in San Diego. Also, we have Lucretia Lee. Hey everybody, I'm Lucretia Lee. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist here in San Diego. I work at one of the um, uh, male de uh, detention facilities and I assess for suicide ideation. And hi, I'm the third part of this triad. My name is Wilanda Johnson. I am a licensed marriage and family therapist who currently is practicing, licensed in California, but is practicing and seeing clients um, from my location and on the East Coast in North Carolina. And I specialize in working with um, adults who are experiencing all kinds of anxieties and life issues, life stressors, and helping them to navigate through those. Well, thank you. And once again, for this topic of discussion, it will be, be t um, it will be around faith versus fear and how our spirituality helps our mental health. And this evening, we have an amazing uh, first guest uh, speaker. Her name is Dr. Loretta Coleman Brown. She is a distinguished professor of psychology from Agnes Scott College. She is a spiritual director as well as companion. She's a writer, retreat leader, and a speaker. She earned her BA from UC Santa Cruz and she received her PhD from Harvard University. Dr. Brown promotes spirituality, the living wisdom of Howard Thurman and uncovering the peace and joy in one's heart as well on her website. Her website is peaceforhearts.com. And she's also on other social media platforms. In 2014, she founded Sisters in Silence to encourage healing through silence and stillness. Dr. Brown's most relevant articles include Praying Without Seizing, Basking in the Love, Loving Presence of God, published in the edited book, Embodied Spirits, Spiritual Directors of Color Tell Their Stories, and uh, dissecting, dissecting Racism, Healing Minds, Cultivating Spirits, published in the edited volume, Living into God's Dream, Dismantling Racism in America. Dr. Brown appears in the documentary, Back Against the Wall, The Howard Thurman Story, available for streaming on pbs.org. Her book, When the Heart Speaks, Listen, Discovering Inner Wisdom, was published in 2019. She is, uh, I'm sorry, she is a most grateful survivor of heart um, as well as kidney transplant 25 years ago, as well as 15 years ago when she had a kidney transplant, um, as well as other medical organs. So please welcome Dr. Brown. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. I am just delighted to join you tonight. And uh uh, thank you so much for inviting me uh, and to be a part of your conversation about how spirituality can enhance our mental health. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. All right. So Dr. Brown, is there anything that you want to share that Marincia didn't cover that you think is very uh, pertinent that our viewers and we, that we should know about? Well, you know, I love the topic that we're addressing tonight, um, faith versus fear. Uh, because I've been in that situation, particularly maneuvering the uh, medical establishment and being placed in situations of uncertainty. And so uh, I, you want to share that. I, I truly want to, um, I, I truly believe that my spirituality and my connection with God really helped me. Um, I'm not sure if I would be here talking to you all today, if I had had 
I haven't had that connection. So that's why I'm just so delighted to be here uh, tonight to encourage people to en engage their spiritual lives in, in their everyday actions. <laughs> Thank you. We are glad to have you here. And there is so much that we know that you could that you're gonna that you can share with us. But you know, I just want to pose the question, just a little check-in. There is so much going on in our environment, our climate, that um, a lot of us are trying to find our way through. And I just want to do a little a check-in just to see what's going on with you ladies. How's your spirit? How are you dealing? Yeah, I think it's so on time that we're talking about this you know we talked about doing this show a couple of weeks ago a week and a half ago and it with things going on in the world specifically with um just the recent news with brianna today was rough for me today was rough for a lot of my black female clients and just having to sit and hold hold space for them and try to hold space for myself and check in with God and my spirituality because it was on a low hopelessness mm -hmm. it was it was heading down that 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 uh that rabbit hole so I'm so glad that we're talking about this because it's so important um to find those areas of hope when we feel like we're powerless or we feel like we're helpless um which I think are some of the some of the Few, feel, few of the feelings um, that a lot of us are experiencing today. Mm -hmm. You know, how are you ladies holding up? Marincia. Well, I know all day, like you were sharing, Walanda, it's trying to, excuse me, really trying to understand what is going on in America, not only as a black and Mexican woman in America, but at the same time as, you know, life doesn't, it doesn't stop. So like you said, Walanda, even during my therapy sessions today, mm -hmm. like we're taught, we leave everything at the door, right? Our personal issues that are going on, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, getting the verdict of what was going on yesterday with Breonna Taylor or any other personal things, it's like, how am I going to be present for my client during therapy while I'm still trying to dissect and figure out what's going on in America, right? So it mm -hmm. was challenging, but I just knew that it was important for me to give this client his or her time. Mm -hmm. And it kind of allowed me to not even think about it, mm -hmm. of what's going on in my personal life, because I had to hone in on that therapy session, um, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But like you said, you know, especially in our field of, of, of being a therapist, you really have to understand and and know how to pull yourself away when you need to whether you might med med meditation whether you need to do prayer whether it means getting a phone call hey this is what's going on just so you can get your spirit together for the next call <laughs> of mm -hmm. you know what, what's mm -hmm. gonna happen next so it's it was a, it was a, a a juggle but you know mm -hmm. i'm here today yeah I'd say for me, it's been a bit interesting. Um, like I said, I work at a detention facility, jail, to put it blank. And um, <laughs> when it was the ruling um, and I was in a, an area where I was eating and it's on TV. And then, you know, they're talking about protesters and, and uh, you know, officers and, and those dynamics. And so I'm in a, a space where, you know, I'm surrounded by sheriffs and stuff. Mm -hmm. and so, Wow. A lot of conversation that, um, you know, they're not speaking directly to me, but you'll hear them talking about protesters and, you know, we got to be ready to put on our gear and this, that, and the other. And mm -hmm. pretty much 99.9% .9 of the talk I hear coming from our sworn staff is like us versus them mentality. And um, and it, it doesn't sit well with my spirit because it's, it's, the protesters don't have a name. It's just called protesters. The issues don't have a name. It's just the protesters, you know, and so trying to stomach this and trying to stay in my lane, you know, and, and, and to see how I'm going to maneuver that. So coming home is interesting because one of the things I do for release is there might be a TV programmer. So every now and then something that come out that I'm like, okay, I want to get into that. And there was a couple of shows on, you know, that came out that uh, I was interested in. And I will tell you because of the subject matter, you know, taking place in the mm. 50s and, and slavery time, I literally had to disconnect. 
Wow. Yeah. I had to discon. I could not sleep and my mind is going and I'm not in a good space. Called my daughter in the room two o'clock in the morning. She couldn't sleep. And we, I just prayed. Mm-hmm. you know, and just ask God to help us. And I, and I haven't reconnected to those shows. I'm like, there's just too much going on right now that mm-hmm. it's, it's beginning to take over me. So like mm-hmm. you said, um, well, I'm this is right on time. Dr. Brown, we're so um, happy to mm-hmm. have you here. Um, yeah. Fear versus faith, because I think we all are challenged with it on a regular basis. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's really important for people to remember that, uh, as Black folks, we've been going through this for hundreds of years. And that the thing that has really always grounded us is our faith, mm-hmm. as well as um, you know, the, the ability to be renewed in prayer and to prepare yourself to get back out there to deal with the struggle. So we're not, this is not the first generation. Right. And right. this is by, by far not the worst. And so I think we need to gain some some strength from our ancestors, you know, mm-hmm. and you go through some of this and, per- and perhaps maybe in a, in, in a worse situation. I, I, one of the things that I was taught, and I, I am a, a little bit older than, you know, the, all of you here um, was around for the, you know, civil rights movement in, in the 60s. And, um, you know, one of the things I learned about being Black was that we are people that, although we may get shut, you know, get uh, pushed down, get up, you know, and, and, that's, and that's where our, you know, our strength comes in. We don't just stay there on the ground. We get back up and, and listen for what it is, is the next step for us to, to engage in the continuous struggle for social justice. And you, you definitely made some great points, Dr. Brown. I think the key thing is so many times when we are dealing with, you know, systematic racism, of all different sorts, we can get in this tunnel vision of what am I supposed to do? You know, where can I get the help? Mm-hmm. I don't understand what can happen. And if we get stuck on that tunnel vision too long, like you said, we can get so stuck that we're not even thinking about, you know what? For an example, like we discussed before, ladies, Harriet Tubman, right? Mm-hmm. All she had was faith. That's all she had, you know? And she knew if I get caught, Again, we're talking about fear, right? And it's okay. We're human. We're going to feel fearful, Mm -hmm. just like Harriet Tubman did, right? She knew that if she got caught, she was going to get tortured. She knew that if her family or friends that were with her, you know, if they got caught, they would be killed and so forth. And their families would get killed. But what, but what happened though? She leaned on her faith and she kept persevering. She kept persevering. She knew God was with her. God spoke to her. She spoke to God in those in those times and she continued to go and it, she is such an amazing example of perseverance and even through the mist of it even through like dr brown you mentioned before even in the fog right it, even in that fearful moment she trusted in her faith she trusted in the lord that even in the midst of this scary situation i'm going to persevere i'm going to keep going back getting my family so they so they could be free and again, Dr. Brown, you ha- we have to remember what our ancestors went through and saying, if they can do it, we can do it, you know? So you, you made a very valid point. Yes. And I just want to add something to what you just said, Marincia, which is that she, the Lord spoke to her, right? And she listened. And I think sometimes what happens is, is that, you know, we get so excited or, you know, we get so caught up in our thoughts that we don't get quiet enough to hear God, you know, giving us some guidance, you know, as I read about Harriet Tubman's lives and the lives of so many other courageous people, they had those moments, those quiet moments where they heard the guidance and they trusted that inner guidance. Mm-hmm. I think that's so important for us to remember that we're, we're walking around with that. It's like, you know, our own, you know, I call it the God positioning system, right? You know what okay. I mean? Okay. Your own you know, GPS, but sometimes you have to slow down Because in fog, you cannot run. You have to walk step by step. And so you have to slow down and on occasion stop, pause, and listen and say, okay, where am I being, what am I being guided to do here? Because, you know, yes, there's, you know, there's things going on all the time. Uh, But I have found when I go inside, when I slow it down and just listen, that there's usually some kind of guidance that gets me around this, you know, around something 
um, or right. to or, or to take you know the Oprah Winfrey position, which is that God is trying to lead me in a different direction when something doesn't work out, exactly. rather than to blame myself and say, oh, I'm not worthy and you know feel rejected, is to say, oh, maybe I'm being directed in a different a way or it, to a different job or situation. Sure. Uh, Dr. Brown, for those of us who don't know a lot about your background, I know Marencia uh, read up a lot of credentials and stuff. Can you just walk us a little bit through your journey of how you came to where you are right now? Let, you know, because I think it's important that people know. Right. So, of course, I'm a Cali girl, as you all would okay. okay. <laughs> We used to just call it a California all girl. Cali's, all Cali's in here. <laughs> I'm a girl living in a different area. That's how Okay. I but I, you know, I grew up in Pasadena and uh, went, of course, to college in, in Santa Cruz. But then I moved to the East Coast for graduate school and um, I became a psychology professor. And that's what I did for okay. 33 years until I, you know, basically stopped about five, seven years ago. Okay. And uh, not to say that I've stopped working, but to say that I've stopped working as a college professor. Right. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I was one who went with the opportunities. If in fact I was at an institution where I felt like they were about to impose the glass ceiling, mm. I was like, okay, so that must be the handwriting on the wall. Let me move to the next opportunity. Mm -hmm. right? So I moved around, you know, taught at University of Tennessee, taught at the University of Colorado, and then ended up at Agnes Scott College, which is a small women's college in Atlanta. Um, and as I was nearing the end of my career, I really felt this very strong call. Now I should say my and I, I don't want to call it an interruption in some ways, but, you know, I had a heart transplant in the middle of my life, mm. uh, which was very scary. Uh, I was single at the time, and I had no idea how I was going to get through this. Mm. But I was led, you know, in a series of different mystical experiences and, you know, hearing God speak to me about, look, you're going to be okay, but this is what you're going to have to do. And once I agreed to take this adventure or journey with nice. God, everything that ha needed to happen fell into place. Wow. So, you know, it's, it's just been amazing. And then, of course, uh, I met my husband. I'm living in Colorado. He's living in Atlanta. I had known his brother for 15 years, never, didn't even know he had a brother. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. you know, on, on a trip to Washington, D.C., I meet his brother. And then, you know, three or four years later, we get married. And I have to say, at the time, I was thinking, you know, I was never going to get married. I mean, I had more than four strikes. Right? <laughs> okay. I mean, heart transplant. It's like, who's going to marry some woman over 40? You know, an heart transplant. Right? Okay. Okay. So, but divine intervention, right? Um, okay. And here I am, you know, 20 some years later, married to, you know, my husband living here in Atlanta. Right. So I feel like my life has been a series of of, of a guided, you know, mm -hmm. journey, um, and that I finally learned. I mean, I think I had to go through so many medical um, ordeals because I was just hard headed. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. God was trying to guide me, and I was like, "Well, but I want to go over here." Right? <laughs> <laughs> it never worked out. <laughs> and, uh, so finally, when I said, "Okay, I'm going to surrender," I think I'm going to go with God now. Uh, things started to get. Okay. you know a bit smoother. so it's it's been a journey and i'm just enjoying you know the life that i have now um now that i've flunked retirement as a spiritual director <laughs> mm -hmm. talk, talking with people about their spiritual lives um leading retreats and mm -hmm. um just trying to put the message out there that it is so important for you to be paying attention to your spiritual life mm -hmm. and it's not just about going to church but it's about what are you doing in your everyday life to have a spirit of mm -hmm. you know, just like you might exercise and you might, you know, eat a nutritious meal. What are you doing to feed your spirit? Right. You know? Yeah, I think so often we forget, like we're, we're a tri, like we're a triad, like we're, we're made of three parts and we just think of mental and physical. We, we neglect the spirit side of us so much and it's all interconnected. We say that all the time, the ladies and I say that all the time, it's all interconnected. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. So I suggest it's people get outside and spend some time in nature. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they do something that makes their heart sing, whether it's a hobby, painting, playing music, whatever yeah. that, all the kinds of things, you know, feed the spirit. And certainly the start, before you pick up that phone in the morning, 
Mm. You might uh, pick up something inspirational and just spend a yes. little time. Yes. Yes. I have a person that I work with and I said to her one day, uh, I challenged her, I said, well, if you can give God as much time as you spend on Facebook. Mm. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <Okay>. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing I wanted to say about that, Dr. Brown and um, La, 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 sorry, Lucretia and Wilanda, <laughs> is um, I did a spiritual and physical fast for 40 days with a very, very good friend of mine. And it's just, it was unbelievable of how much I grew spiritually. You know what I mean? Like waking, like Lord knows I'm not a morning person, but I woke up. 5.30, 5.35 every morning with him. We did our prayer. We did our devotion. And just like you said, to, to, to be in God's presence, just to start your day, mm -hmm. it changed. It literally changed my, my energy. It changed my, my thinking. It changed my mood. And mm -hmm. again, you know, so mm -hmm. many times mm -hmm. we can wake up you flip it to the news or you flip it to Facebook. Mm -hmm. And again, like you said, Dr. Brown, if you're flooding your, your spirit with the toxicity of the world, that is the, that's how you're setting your day. That's how you're setting the tone of the day. So if you're including children like myself and Lucretia, if you're agitated at your child, well, why aren't you waking up? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, is it your mindset of how you're addressing your child in the morning? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you have to have that calm. You have to have that peace. Um, and I just thank the Lord for that time and that opportunity. And again, it's God spoke to me in so many ways. And mm -hmm. I mean, to be honest, I need to get back and do it. I mean, I'm not doing it every day. Like I, I was, and I'm, and I'm starting to do it because I, I, I definitely see a difference and it's, it is very important. Marincia, can you share a little bit more about um, when you say fast and then you said you woke up at 535 and you prayed. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there other things that you did throughout your day in terms of fasting? Or yeah. So with anybody that doesn't know, when it comes to spiritual fast, um, there's different types. And my, my definition of fast, and I would love to hear Dr. Brown's, is stripping yourself from something or even someone that, that's a distraction of getting closer to the Lord. So whether it's food, whether it's somebody that's toxic in your life, whether it's Facebook, whether it's TV. Right. And if you really pray about it, the Lord will speak to you and say 40 days of this, six okay. months of this, three days from this. And mm -hmm. again, when you really distract that, God will cleanse you from the inside out, ladies. Like there's things that, you know, we were doing a, um, again, like I was sharing with you, the uh, physical fast as well. So we weren't eating thing any we weren't eating anything solid. It was all water. It was all smoothies and juicing. And I mean, even within that, I was losing weight. You know, I was eating healthier. So God, it's like, like you, I, I believe it was Willanda that said, like we are mind, body, and soul, you know, and we have to be healthy in all of those areas of our life. It's like, how are we going to grow as a person if we're neglecting one piece of it? It's like, we're a whole body. And you only, if, if you, neglect the arm how is the other arm going to work you know <laughs> how the other leg's going to work for us to walk i mean it's all hand in hand mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh we have a question ladies okay Ooh. i don't know if, if now we want to interject but this is the question um what is something you feel like is a distraction in your life from you and god mm. anyone want to share Well, I'll just say that I think mm -hmm. um, social media is certainly one of the- I was gonna say that. Distraction. Um, I call it the big ego distraction because it just pulls you away. Oh, yes, big ego. That is good. Yes, yes. Uh, but, but also television, I mean, news, you know, uh, th those kinds of things. And then I think sometimes we have um, situations, maybe someone has said something, um, uh, you know, to, to attack us or something. I remember one day I sat down for my morning prayer and um, I started crying. And, you know, I, start, I, I, I started apologizing to God. I said, oh, I'm so sorry, you know. And I heard this really say to me, why are you apologizing? Don't you know that this pain is, is getting in the, in the, you know, interfering with our connection? You know, so if you need to come and get the teddy bear out and the whole box of tissues and just go ahead on. Okay. You know, yeah. because that is uh, definitely 
what you need, need right now so that you can get back to connect. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you said that because I was going to say my emotions. Um, when in, in May, when everything happened with um, Brother Floyd, like I was so angry. Like I didn't even want to talk to God. I was like, because whatever I'm going to say, it's going to come out very, very nasty. And I don't want you to, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to, not that, you know, like I would cuss at God or anything like that. But I was like, my heart is filled with so much anger. And I, I just, it was, it was just, it was a blockage. And I was like, I can't, I don't want to come to you with this because like, you're my safe space. Like, I want to keep that safe. And like, I want to keep that flowery and peaceful. And right now I'm really ugly. And I do that with people. Like when I'm not in a good space, I will distance from mm -hmm. people. That's just my, that's how I, how that's I cope okay. or whatever, try to regulate. And it was, it was getting to the point where I was like, I'm, I feel like I'm losing my faith. And I was like, okay, I need to come back. I need to get back yeah. to the rock. Like <laughs> I'm starting to like, be like this world, throw this world away. This world is trash. I hate people. <laughs> I was like, okay, God. I was like, God I was like, okay, okay, okay. Come on, come on back. Yeah. Like you got to come back and, and drink right? this like, well. It's all right. I still love you. Yeah. And back. I need you to drink from this well, because you're, mm -hmm. you're starting to dry out. Like, Wow. Which, which you had last week, like that's starting to dry out. You need to be refreshed. So, you know, your hope needs to be restored. So I'm so glad you said that because my emotions will separate me. They will, they will separate me from God if I allow them to. Mm -hmm. It's interesting what you said, Valanda, because that is how I am. If I'm going through something or I'm in a space that's not good, I disconnect from, from people. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, I mean, they don't know it necessarily, but I just have to go within myself and I just need mm -hmm. to be quiet. Um, mm -hmm. But in that disconnection, um, you know, in the environment, stuff like that, things are, that are making me unhappy, um, I can find myself also disconnected from God mm -hmm. because I'm trying to, to, to separate myself from all, but, but the very person, the very being that I should not be disconnecting from, it kind of falls within that as well. And so I have to kind of, in my, in my quiet space, like, okay, I can disconnect from them, but I need you to help me. Mm, that's good. Yeah. 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 And Any another thing, thoughts? yeah, I was just going to say um, two things. One is God is our parent, right? He's our comforter. He's our provider. He's our healer. And he provides for us like no other human can provide for us. And sometimes going to our best friend, going to, you know, a spouse, a boyfriend, a mother is great, but sometimes God can only give us mm -hmm. what he can only give us. You know what I mean? Not what our parents can give us, not from our best friends, our siblings, but God is like, I created you. Like, I know your deepest inner thoughts. Mm -hmm. I know what can heal you. I, I know what I can give you. And if it's like, no, God, no. And we're treating God like we treat our friends. God's like, okay, but I love you. But when mm -hmm. you're ready, you back to me you know what I mean like mm -hmm. my grace is enough my you know I'm gonna give you the mercy and the grace but you made a very key point though Lucretia it's like God can only give us things that no one else can give us honestly and Absolutely. we can't treat God you mm -hmm. know like humans because humans will will you know they'll backstab us they may not be there for us they may not answer our calls but God's like I'm always here absolutely absolutely see like we've been talking a lot about um faith during times of um, adversity. Dr. Brown, I was wondering if you can speak a little bit on um, faith and how faith and fear are interconnected. Mm -hmm. Well, I think mm -hmm. oftentimes, you know, for a lot of people, they think that if they um, are being faithful, they shouldn't feel fear. Uh, right, right. No. But it is possible for us to hold both of those at the same time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, there, there are times when, you know, there are, you know, maybe it's a new thing that you're starting, maybe a new job, you know, and uh, you're, you're really terrified inside, but you're trying to hide it. Um, but, but it is that, that faith of, okay, here I am, I'm going to walk in here and uh, see what this next adventure is about. So, you know, we, a lot of people get taught that, you know, you, if you're going to, if, if you say you have faith then you shouldn't feel fear. Yeah. Or you know, if you feel fear, then you're not, you don't have faith. And I think the two can coexist at the same Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it brings out a lot of shame too when we when we think in that way, like, well, 
then that means I really don't have faith in God. If I'm, if I'm fearful of this situation or I'm fearful of the future, I'm fearful of my life in America. Um, it brings about a lot of shame. And then you start to question, well, do I really believe in God? And like, do I really think that God is, is exists? Do I really have faith in who he is? And then that is, it's just, it can spiral in a really bad yeah. space when we start to put those two against each other. I think too, sometimes people confuse belief with faith. So some people say, oh yeah, I really believe in God. But believing in God and having faith in God hmm. are really different mm. because mm. faith requires radical trust. Mm. Okay. Amen. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of times people uh, will say, and I've even had people say to me, well, you know, uh, yeah, I, I believe in God, but I'm not sure if I trust God that much, right? Because they're always trying to take care of stuff instead mm -hmm. of doing their part of the money. <laughs> right. so they want to control everything. Yes. yes. <laughs> and so, you know, I said, well, you know, maybe you might, you might want to look at, you might want to think about that, you know, about, uh -huh. you know, you, you say you believe and you go through all the motions, but how are you in your daily life? Are you really trusting God? And you know, for some of us who've been through serious medical issues, that's what it is. It's a rat, you know, when you're in that operating room and they can tell you to count down, you just have to surrender, you know, and really, that's where the radical trust comes in. But mm -hmm. Otherwise, I mean, even on a daily basis, you know, you, you have to ask yourself, how often am I really trusting God? Right. Mm -hmm. Am I trying to take care of it? And one thing that you even said that reminds me, even with me and even my close friends and my close family, they know I, one of my spirits, I mean, one of my gifts is like discernment and how, how strong can your discernment be of a direction in your life, right? Of, of whether it's a career change, whether should I go to this store today or our next, you know what I mean? Like even the most simplest little thing or the most biggest plans when you pray about something, or even when you meet somebody, that Holy Spirit that's in you, which as a Christian, as a believer, we call it discernment. It's like, mm, no, I'm about to go over here this time. Like, you know, it was nice meeting you, but no, thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm going to go another way. And, and that's the Holy Spirit protecting us, whether it's physically protecting us, whether it's spiritually protecting us. And again, Dr. Brown, if we don't spend that time with God being present with him and hearing him, how can you really strengthen that discernment? How can you feel and, and sense that Holy Spirit of anything in your life? And again, like you said, if you want to control everything in your life, you really have to sit back and say, what is, what's going on with me where I feel like I cannot relinquish that and trust God wholeheartedly? Mm -hmm. I think that that's where the practice comes in, right? I mean, I, you know, people just expect in the middle of, of something that they're automatically going to develop a skill for discernment. Mm -hmm. And it really requires that you, it's like, like exercise, right? You've got to, you know, exercise those opportunities. So, I, you know, I tell people all the time to trust their inner knowingness, you know, with a capital okay. I and a capital K, right? Mm -hmm. Which is really the spirit trying to direct us. But we're always in such a rush that mm -hmm. we can pause, right? We get to pause and and say, okay, wait. Before I, I I go out to do this, let me just check in and see. And usually, if we check in, we get an answer. I don't yeah. know. We don't need to do this. Or right. and, and sometimes when we ignore it, I, I mean, I've even had dreams where I've ignored the guidance and was like, no, I'm coming to you in dreams. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. In any way or form. <laughs> Um, Dr. Brown, I like how you talked about, um, in terms of the discernment, what have you, the inner knowing is, it's, it, we have to practice because everyone doesn't just know or have the spirit of discernment or what have you, you have to practice. And you mentioned something a little earlier uh, when you were speaking, Dr. Brown, about, you said you had several mystical experiences that kind of help you come to the place of where you are. Can you share something about those mystical experiences? Well, yes, I had a couple, uh, one in which um, I was, you know, I was supposed to be going on the list for the heart transplant. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, my doctor said, well, are you ready to go on the list? It was like November. And um, I said, well, I'm waiting on a sign. That's what I told the doctor. The doctor looked at me like, this, <laughs> this is not a sign. <laughs> but, you know, thinking like a crazy professor, I'm like thinking, it's not the end of the semester. I can't, you know, I haven't corrected my mm -hmm. 
Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I did ask for a sign and out of the blue, I got a phone call from a minister, you know, in, um, in Colorado Springs who happened to have uh, the third person in the state of, third black person in the state of Colorado who had had a heart transplant in his congregation. Wow. He <laughs> so arranged for me to have a conversation with this man who had had, who was basically with the same transplant center. Wow. So I'm like, what? That's not even a probability. I mean, like, you know, that's obvious. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. And then, of course, still being the crazy professor that I was, uh, it was now December. And uh, I was negotiating on when I could, you know, um, have the transplant. I was right. trying to think of the end of the academic year. Right. <laughs> I'm example of controlling something. Um, I have it on October 2nd at 7 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> when the quarter is over. <laughs> right, exactly. So, so I, um, I, woke, I, I woke up from a nap and I could feel this presence in the room mm. and I could ask questions and feel the answers. So I said, you know, like, how about, you know, end of, and they were like, no, it was like a no. And then I said, well, what about February? It was like, no. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, I need to do holidays. You know, I want to be with, I, I need to be with my family. And that was like, okay, a yes. That was a okay. yes. Right? But what's so amazing about that is that uh, I went and spent time with my family. Um, and so on, I went on the actual list with a beeper on January, January 4th. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I was called on January 9th. Mm. It's unheard of to be on the list for five wow. days. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so we do it. Yeah, so, th so it was one of those things where the spirit was real clear, yes, no, you need to do this. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, no, it can't wait till the end of the academic year. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Right. So, and, and, and one thing that I just want to pose is that what we go through in adversity, Dr. Brown and, and um, Walanda, Lucretia, even with me, it helps me for the future when I have to go through something else. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was in Washington, D.C., and I was just on the floor just praying and just talking to God, and God told me to create a prayer book. And it was simple. It was just a black little notebook, pieces of paper, nothing fancy. And what I started to do was Anytime I had a prayer, I wrote it down with the month and the year. Or anytime God spoke to me, I put the month and the year. And then when God answered those prayers or when those visions came to light, I wrote it out. I put the month and the year. And what I'm saying is that when you look at the past, like, okay, God, if you allowed me to go through A, B, and C, or when you when I prayed and you answered this, or when you gave me a vision and this came to light, that that strengthens our faith. That says, you know what, regardless of whatever I go through, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remind myself, I'm going to reread these te testimonies. That's, that's going to push me of, of being, of course, we're going to be a little fearful, a little anxious, but it's not going to cloud my judgment because I already know what you did for me. And that's so important to remember, you know, when because it's, it's going to happen. You know, we're only human. Things are going to come up. But again, it's so important to, to lean on God and, and his promises. Yeah. We have a couple of questions. Um, I'm going to read one and then we can talk about the other a little bit. Um, I guess one of us has mentioned feeling disconnected from God and what does that look like? Um, and when we're feeling disconnected, what are some things we can do to help us stay connected? And I think we're going to get, we were going to get to this, but um, we have someone who's asking like, what can we, what does that look like? when we're disconnected and what can we do to reconnect? Mm -hmm. Takers. I, I, I can speak, you know, um, like I think disconnection is the same for every, I mean, it looks different for everybody. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when I say that it's more so, uh, there's a couple of things. I think about my habits. So for example, um, I do like to fellowship. I do like to be around other folks in church. A lot of us, no one should be doing that right now in person, right? <laughs> so for example, when I had first started working at my present position, um, my regular work schedule is Sunday through Thursday. Now, I had to pray on that one because that was potentially a deal breaker. I've never worked on the weekends, mm -hmm. specifically on Sundays. 
And not only do I, I like fellowshipping, I felt I need it. I need, I need to do this. You know what I mean? I need to be a part of a larger group and, you know, things like that. And so I really was not, I wasn't happy with it, but I was like, I prayed about this position. I believe that I'm, you know, I can do some good here. God would, you know, made this position available for me and everything is going to, going to work out. And so in terms of this connection, first, I was just feeling like I'm missing out on the word. And I'm missing on the laughs and the hugs. And um, and so for me, I had to figure out how do I tap back into that? You know what I mean? Is that you know, finding a, a, a sermon that's streaming. Um, talk to a girlfriend who said, hey, this is what happened. Or uh, sending me the notes or what have you. So basically get into the uh, losing um, habit or a certain type of way of doing life that makes me feel connected. So. Mm -hmm. Anything that's mine is that is what I mean by being disconnected. Not that losing faith, but just not feeling as present. Mm -hmm. And that's what I consider it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think I would say the same for me. Um, I probably do way too much self-assessment, self <laughs> um, but I'm, I, I try to check in with myself a lot um, okay. and seeing like where I'm at, what am I thinking? Am I, what are my behaviors telling me? What is, what are my feelings telling me? What are my thoughts telling me? Um, and I'm generally, I'm generally in a good space. So when I'm not in a good space, it's, it's a big deal. It's like, okay, something is off. What, what okay. do, where am I tracking? Where am I on the calendar? What's going on? Um, but again, like you said, like looking at your habits, looking at what's going on around you to kind of see, okay, this is off. This is not really how I really respond. I'm not, all, I'm not a negative person. So when I'm starting, if everything is pessimistic, mm, something's okay. not right. Mm -hmm. And checking in with that too is definitely like, I'm disconnected. I'm starting to feel salty about everything. And that's not, that's not usually how I roll. Short tempered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So. Um, and another question. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. Just like how, how to reconnect. I was just going to answer that part or just add some oh, more mm -hmm. is, you know, meditation, like mm -hmm. Dr. Brown said, you know, just being still, you know, like just being in silence. And I know some people that it can make them feel uneasy, but I think just sitting in silence on um, prayer you know, being around your loved ones, as well as just being in the word, you know, thank God for technology where you can go on YouTube, you can, you know, say, hey, I'm, you know, or even just the Bible app, like I'm anxious, or I'm fearful, you know, and it will pop up verses that you can read, you know, you can pop up a sermon to again, to, to nourish your spirit. Mm -hmm. One thing I was going to add is that I think sometimes it's important to go off the grid. You know, okay. even if mm -hmm. a hot day or 24 hours, my husband and I recently did a, a three-day silent retreat at home. And we both <laughs> went on the grid for the entire time. No, oh, like no television. And it was just cleansing for both of us. And, okay. and you know, you, you could finally feel the presence of God because all these other distractions were out of the way. Okay. So okay. it was a great way. And then once we came off of that, we thought, hmm, we probably don't need to have that news on as much as we can have it. Uh, okay. You know, I other, love that. Other things that were, you know, sort of toxic and, you know, yeah. So it was, I, 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 I was amazed that, that you could actually do it at home because usually I take a solid retreat away. Okay. Uh, you know, just prepared some food ahead of time and mm -hmm. uh, we just took three days off. Wow. I love that. I remember when my phone, my phone would break and I'd be like, oh, I'm not accessible. And I used to feel so great <laughs> when I, when I didn't have my phone. And then when I get mm -hmm. it back, I'm like, I'm not going to be on it. I'm not going to be on. And I would go right back into that nasty habit, but it feels yeah. good to not be so accessible mm -hmm. and making yourself so available to all of those things that go into our eye gates, our ear gates, all of that. Yeah. And tell your friends and family. Tell your friends and family, I'm just going off the grid for. Right. I like that. Um, I'm not dead. I'm just off grid. <laughs> I, I would say one thing that I that I do to to reconnect is, is simple, um, but it's very effective for me is put on some gospel music. Um, oh, worship. Of, of, my, of my choosing. I'm driving into work on a Sunday morning. I mean, you would think I was leading in a choir. 
Yes, I right. am having a you concert. Are. You know, yep. people pass by me and they just start, <laughs> they have no idea. I, think I'm, I don't know what they think I'm listening to, but I am leading. I'm the lead. Yeah, yeah. All the verses. The lead and the choir. Everything. <laughs> exactly. And, and it does, it does replenish my spirit. I mean, I it 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 forms my outlook on the day and walking into this Amen. building. Amen. No mm -hmm. light. Yeah, absolutely. Lucretia, I am the same way. Like when I tell you I be blowing, like <laughs> I sing like I'm Tasha Cobbs. Like, <laughs> and again, cool. it's like, you know, and again, I have a one-year-old, and I just love how even at such when yeah. even when she was a baby. He's in that spiritual realm. She yep. sees my hands up. She sees me praising God. Yeah. And again, like we have to model that for our children, our nieces and our nephew. And like mm -hmm. when you're in that spirit realm, it's like you want to shout, you want to dance, like, and it literally fills your spirit. And afterwards, like, oh, that was good. Like, yeah. what's next, Lord? So I that, that's my key thing too, Lucretia, is yeah. put that worship music on. So at the praying, mm -hmm. woo, you'll be delivered by yourself. Like <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry, Walana, you have a next question? I have another question, but I'm going to tweak it a little bit just to kind of okay. stay on the topic. So somebody was asking, like, how do we, um, you know, share like the with non-believers, um, the importance of knowing that they're loved and appreciated and that and the importance of just like their spiritual health without mm -hmm. without shoving our belief, because we're all believers, right? We're all believers, but everybody obviously is not a believer. But how do we share the importance of that spiritual health without it being like, oh, well, do it this way, go pray, go find Jesus, you know, whatever it is. How do we encourage that with people who are non-believers in a way that's loving and accepting and any, well, any thoughts I, I on that? that? You might want to start uh, with a conversation about what brings you joy? Mm -hmm. You know, or what brought you joy as a child mm -hmm. um, to, to, you know, so to help them kind of begin to think about and reflect on, you know, where, 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 where's the joy, where, where does the joy come from in your life? Mm -hmm. And it's just an easy kind of easing yeah. into, um, you know, more spiritual topics. Mm -hmm. and, and because, you know, I consider um, people who play music or people who paint or people who sow, those are spiritual activities because they're creative activities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our creator created us to create. So it's almost like, you know, you're just in the flow. Mm -hmm. So I would probably start there to find out just sort of with curiosity, you know, sort of mm -hmm. what, where, where is that? And where, where was that in the beginning before perhaps maybe they got dissuaded by something that happened? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I like that. Absolutely. I think this is a good place. Like, Dr. Brock, can you share like what some of your retreats might look like when you take people on um, mm -hmm. retreats? <laughs> what are some of the things you can do? Yeah, well, it depends. Um, you know, um, I have taken people to monasteries um, where, you know, there's sort of a set kind of schedule. But typically when people say, for instance, they're taking a weekend retreat, you know, they might show up on Friday, you know, and have a meal. And then there might be some kind of program on Friday night, you know, a, a discussion about, you know, what the retreat topic is on, whether it's, you know, it's on, you know, what's your spiritual practice, or it might be on a, you know, like I often give uh, retreats on the African American mystic Howard Thurman, and you know, sort of what was his life like as a young boy, you know, how was he gone to God as a young boy, et cetera. Um, and then on, um, on Saturday, um, you know, people are often given a lot of time to just walk around, you know, the okay. grounds, wherever they might be, um, mm -hmm. you know, just to be, you know, in nature. Sure. You know? And typically, you know, they're silent. Um, just to give people, again, a chance to get off the grid, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, try to have uh, nutritious meals, you know, healthy meals. Um, but giving people a lot of free time, you know, with some presentations in between, mm -hmm you know to journal um yeah. to, to perhaps maybe sit down with the spiritual director companion to talk about where they are right now on their own spiritual journeys um time to pray um you know just just an opportunity to you know retreat is is a step away or a you know withdrawing for a, you know a time 
So just to get out of your daily routine, sure. you know, that you're doing so that you can, you can just get away to reflect on where am I right now in my life? And, and is this where God is calling me? Or did I just, you know, decide on this path? And where, where, would, where, would, where would, would I get the most joy? You know, because it's really, you know, I think our calling is our joy, you know? So, you know, where, what, might I, what might my journey look like next? Mm -hmm. um, so typically they end maybe with lunch on Sunday. Okay. Um, and, you know, people sort of get a chance then to talk about, you know, what's happened and mm -hmm. you know, talk to people that they probably wanted to talk to but couldn't, you know, <laughs> because we were all yeah. But it's a wonderful opportunity to just get away. And of course, you know, nearly every state in California, you all have just wonderful retreat centers. They have fabulous retreat centers in North Carolina. They have them okay. here in the Atlanta metro area. Um, <laughs> Or you can, you know, you can take your own private retreat. There are a lot of retreat centers that have what they call hermitages so that you can get away by yourself if that's what you want to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think you made a very valid point. And thank you for sharing that, uh, Dr. Brown. And it kind of tied, to me, it ties back into that question because so many times as a, as a teacher, because we're all a teacher, right? In one form or another, and sometimes we don't even have to teach by our words, but we could just teach by our actions. And I think that's key when it comes to just showing God's grace, showing God's mercy, showing God's love, and just allowing, like, you know, there's something different about you. You know, like, what, what, what's in you that's different than somebody else? And like you said, Dr. Brown, just having that conversation mm -hmm. and just that interest, like, oh, you know what? Let me just show, share with you how God brought me through a kidney transplant, right? Or through whatever in life. And again, or even prime example, you know, invite them to a retreat, right? And mm -hmm. by being, by allowing them to be there, being still, you know, the Holy Spirit will work on them. And like we all know, because we're believers, we just plant a seed, right? Yeah. And the next person will water it. The next person will water it. And we may not even know, but whether it's five months from now, five years from now, they could be, uh, you know, being baptized in the name mm -hmm. of Jesus, be a believer. So sometimes we got to just plant that seed. It could be something minute or just, you know, showing them love and, and, and God's grace that he gives and pours on us every day. Mm -hmm. Well, we are great examples. And I think that's so important, right? That, I mean, because it's like, why would anybody want to be what you are if you're not exuding joy and happiness yourself? Right, right. Exactly. Like, yeah. Your testimony, right, for it. Or the gospel. Mm -hmm. so, so I think it's important, which is why I, I keep bringing up that, that, that uh, question, where is your joy? You know, what, what kind of joy are you exuding? Because I think God is about peace, deep peace, peace that passes understanding. Mm -hmm. and you have those moments, you're joyful because it's just so fabulous to be that yeah. peace. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so people can tell, you know, they will know you by your fruits, right? So so people can tell whether or not, I mean, if you're, if you're a downtrodden believer, that's not a good example for the rest of the people. Why would they want to, why would they want to join anything? Yeah. People like that. <laughs> and, and, and the key thing too, is just saying that, you know what? Yes, I'm a believer, but it doesn't mean that I'm perfect. You right. know what I mean? Like I, there's people like, well, you know, if you're a believer, then your past was A, B, and C, or you say this, or you do. No one said life was perfect. Nobody said that. We're not going to have a past, but when God heals you, when God forgives you, when you forgive yourself, number one, it doesn't matter what I did in my past, right? Because what mm -hmm. matters now is what I'm doing. And it's a relationship with the Lord. And those toxic people that would bring up your past, like, well, she's a Christian, but she does this, or she did this. Look at, look at your life and focus on your path with God to make your life better instead of judging somebody else, you mm -hmm. know? And it's like, let them know, yeah, my life isn't perfect, but, you know, the closer I get to God, the more I can exuberate the Holy Spirit and his, per his mercy and his grace over us, you know? Absolutely. What I loved about your retreat is that what, as you were talking, I just kept hearing like the quietness, the quietness mm -hmm. and going within yourself. You know, mm -hmm. one of my favorite scriptures is we have everything we need according to life and God. And it's like, we already have it. It's already mm -hmm. within us. Like mm -hmm. we don't have to search for money and power and, yeah. 
fame and all those things, we have everything we need. But if we're not looking within ourselves and we're basing it off of what social media says or what TT over here says or whoever, like we, we find ourselves lost and we're in more right. distress because we're like, well, let me try this. Let me try this. Let me try. No, no, no. Sit with yourself. Yeah. Go within. Okay. And, and it, the answer will be there when you look for it. Right. And, and don't be a people pleaser. That's basically what you're yeah. saying. You know what I mean? Like I'm living my life according to what God says and according to my purpose. It doesn't matter how or what you think of what I should do in my life. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's so true. Because that causes so much anxiety. Mm -hmm. focusing on other people's expectations and qualifications and stuff so Mm -hmm. yeah good stuff there's some gems in the uh wizard of Oz story right we all have the red clippers on already folks you know you don't have to i love that i love that yeah Mm -hmm. love it (laughs) um one last thing i did want to mention um dr brown can you Explain a little bit more of what is a spiritual companion? What is a spiritual director? Mm -hmm. I think that's really important to share with our viewers. Well, it's been around for a long time, particularly within the Christian community. It started out with the the, uh, desert fathers and mothers, those people that fled into the uh, desert after, you know, Jesus' death and resurrection and and were fleeing the persecution. And they were out, you know, uh, pretty much uh, being quiet and... uh, you know, gathering wisdom and people would go out there to talk to them and to ask mm-hmm. them for, you know, questions. So that particular sort of form, you know, kind of moved into monasteries for many hundreds of years. But now it's actually um, practiced all over the world. Um, there, there's a professional organization, um, Spiritual Directors International. And so people actually meet with people once a month. Um, okay. Sometimes you see a lot of this for people who are training to for the ministry. You know, they they you know want to work with them to, in examining their call. But spiritual direction and uh, companion is open to anyone who's really curious about deepening their relationship with God, or you know having somebody just walk with them during this segment of their spiritual journey. Okay, and that's so, awesome. I never yeah. even heard of it till I. So I had the meeting with you. I was like, wow, that is yeah. so neat. I didn't even know, yeah, for sure. you know what it was. That's awesome. Yes, it, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful calling for me. At least it was a calling for me. Right. Uh, after those many years of teaching, you know, in the university. And I love it. I love being able to work with people. And I have just such wonderful people, you know, that, that I've been able to witness the mm-hmm. transformation orchestrated by God. I mean, it, it couldn't be orchestrated by anybody else. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, delighted to, to encourage more people. Um, spiritual Directors International has a website. You can go on there and find a spiritual director. Okay. Uh, there's also a Spiritual Directors of Color Network. You can just, you know, um, search for that, Spiritual Directors of Color mm-hmm. Network. And there are a growing number of Spiritual Directors of Color. So... Okay. Depending on, and some of them, you know, denominational, some are not. So it just you know, depends on, you know, who, who you might be interested in working with. Yeah. yeah. And we'll put that information in our, in our chat. Yeah, we have one last question as we start to wrap up. Um, okay. I have someone who's asking, um, and, and there's two questions, but I'm just going to kind of go to the one that I think is um, probably more, more beneficial. Um, have you found Dr. Brown any, how oh, that was, that rhymed. Have you found any dynamic keys to joy in mental health? Well, I would say, because I, you know, was a psychology professor. So certainly mm-hmm. speaking for the field of, uh, uh, of therapy that a lot of times we are carrying feelings, pain, Um, all kinds of stuff with us in our hearts. You know, that's sort of what my book was about. It was about, you know, sort of uncovering some of these things and and getting some of these layers of stuff that are weighing down our hearts. Um, And that we need to go to a professional Mm -hmm. um, along with God, Mm -hmm. you know, moving these things. Because underneath all of that is our joy, is our peace. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, we basically have piled on all the hurts and, you know, rejections and all kinds of things that have happened along the way in our lives on top of that beautiful 
self that God created that is full of peace and joy. So you know, the, the new health piece helps us to begin to take those, those layers off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I just thank you so much, Dr. Brown. Um, we are just so grateful. We are blessed that you just had this opportunity to come on our show and just bless us, bless our viewers. Um, so we're so fortunate for the knowledge um, that you brought. So just once again, we, we really appreciate you. And we really thank you. And we'll definitely jot down your information, how people can, you know, reach you on your website. Uh, I know I would love to purchase your book. Um, so just thank you again. And thank you for the viewers. As always, mm -hmm. we appreciate everyone. Um, come in and watch us again. It's every second and fourth Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and 10 p.m. East Coast Time. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Brown.